Okay, so in this video, we're going to be talking about parallel and perpendicular lines. So up here, I've got two diagrams and I've got ex an example of two parallel lines and an example of two perpendicular lines. So firstly, what are par parallel and perpendicular lines? So for parallel lines, they are two lines that uh, they side by side and they never meet. So they never cross each other and they both go towards infinity forever and ever and they never touch each other. Now perpendicular lines are lines that do meet and they meet in a very special way because they meet and they form a right angle. So this angle right here, or any angle actually, is exactly 90 degrees. And this uh, is the case for every pair of perpendicular lines. Now the question is, what conditions can we put on lines to see if they're parallel or perpendicular? Just given the equations, what conditions on these constants uh, can we enforce to know if they're parallel or perpendicular? Well, for the parallel case, it's quite simple really, because we need uh, two lines that go up uh, with the same gradient, the same incline, and that happens exactly if the two gradients, m1 and m2, are equal to each other. So I'll just write here, parallel if uh, and only if m1 is equal to m2. And in general, we talk about parallel lines that um, are not on top of each other. So there is a special case where if C1 and C2 are equal to each other, they would be right on top of each other, but they would be the same line ex essentially. And that's still parallel to itself, I guess. Uh, but in general, we're considering lines that aren't um, equal uh, and they're kind of slightly off. So the only condition is that they have the same gradient. Now for perpendicular lines, this isn't as obvious really. Um, it's the condition is still involves their gradient um, and it's actually quite weird because two lines are perpendicular perpendicular if and only if the product of their gradients so m1 times m2 only if this equals minus 1 now where does this minus 1 come from it doesn't really uh, make sense why this is true um, but we could rearrange this and also write this as m1 is equal to minus 1 divided by m2. And this expression here is called the negative reciprocal of m2. So what we've done is we've taken m2, we've flipped it over, so we have 1 divided by it, and we put a negative in sign, uh, sign in front of it. So if we get given a gradient to find its perpendicular line, uh, we just have to replace that gradient with uh, minus 1 divided by m2. So let's just do a quick example to test we understand this. If we take the line y is equal to 3x plus 4, then uh, the gradient is 3 and the y-intercept is 4. And as we've seen, the y-intercept doesn't really matter. So we're only interested in this number here. Um, uh, the gradient is equal to uh, 3. So now let's come up with two examples, one a parallel line and one a perpendicular line. So if we go down here to the left, and this is going to be parallel. So let's write par for parallel and to find the parallel line we just take the equation we keep the gradient so we want 3x we don't want to change anything about that and then we just choose another constant so we just choose another number instead of 4 could be anything let's just choose 9 now this is going to be a parallel line to the original one and it's just going to be shifted upwards in fact because the constants bigger so we've just for example taken a line and we've found another parallel line to it by just moving the whole line upwards. And what's important to find the parallel line is to keep the same gradient. Now if we instead we want to find the perpendicular line, just write per for perpendicular, what we do is we need to take the gradient, so look at the gradient which is 3, and we take the negative reciprocal of it. So we have 3 and we write minus 1 divided by 3. That's the negative reciprocal. And then we have the variable x. So this is the new gradient. And if we multiply minus 1 over 3, with 3, we're going to get minus 1. And that's our condition for two lines being perpendicular. And then we can just take any constant. It doesn't really matter. So let's just take 1, for example. Um, we can take any constant, and that would just have the effect of shifting this line up and down um, the other one. But as you can see, the, um, the angle that the two lines would make would still be 90 degrees. So in fact, there's an infinite number of perpendicular lines given a line. And there's also an infinite number of parallel lines. And this is kind of the method of how to find one, for example. 
So now we're going to look at a few more examples and uh, apply some more conditions. So instead of having an infinite number of lines, we're only going to have a one line as a solution. Okay, so for this example, we're going to take the line y is equal to minus 2x plus 9. And our problem is going to be to find, find a parallel line uh, to the original line uh, parallel line that passes that passes through the point passes through the point 1 minus 5 and now if you want to sketch this to get an idea of what we're trying to do here very badly drawn set of axes <laughs> and we have this line here so this is going to look something like this again very badly drawn but the y-intercept is 9 and the gradient is minus 2 so it's going downwards so this is the original line. We want to find a, point, uh, a line that's parallel to this one, but it also passes through this point. So for example, one minus five might be here. And we want to find a line which passes through this point and is parallel. And you can see if we shift this line across, there's only gonna be one solution in fact. There's only gonna be one line that is parallel to this one and passes through this point. So what we do for to have two lines be parallel, we need to take the same gradient. So let's just write down y is equal to minus 2x. That's half of the problem. Um, and then we're just going to write plus c as this constant. So this is the unknown. And by changing the value of c, we're essentially shifting the line up and down. And this is kind of the control variable to uh, help us solve the problem. And now we want to find the value of c such that this line goes through this point, And this point is 1 minus 5. And to do that, we're just going to substitute this, these numbers in. So we're just going to substitute x is equal to 1 and y is equal to minus 5. So if we do this, we'll have minus 5 is equal to minus 2 times 1 plus c. And then we can just rearrange this to get c is equal to minus 5 plus 2, which is minus 3, right? Just by solving this equation. And now this value of c, if we go back up here, or I'll just write it out again, we have y is equal to minus 2x minus 3. This is the equation that is parallel to the original one, and it goes through this point. So we've imposed an extra condition on it, and we found the parallel line to the original one. Okay, so now let's do another example, uh, but this time with perpendicular lines. So our original line that we're gonna be working with is gonna be y is equal to two x minus four. And the problem is going to be to find a perpendicular line. So a perpendicular line uh, that also passes through a point, a particular point, uh, find the line through the point, we're going to do 3 minus 1. And we again can think of this graphically, so let's draw this out. Uh, we have a line which goes through the y-intercept of minus 4, and it goes upwards because it's got positive gradients, so something like that. It doesn't really matter too much. Um, and then we're interested in this point, so x is equal to 3, I don't know where that is, but maybe maybe it's around here, for example. And we want to find the line that is perpendicular to the original line, and it goes through this uh, singular point, which is three minus one. So the line we're looking for is gonna be something like this. Perpendicular is gonna form a right angle when it meets the other line, and it goes through this point. And you can see that there's only gonna be one solution because all the perpendicular lines are like this. They're uh, form a right angle to the original line, but there's only one line that's going to go through this point as well. So we're just searching for this one exact, uh, exactly one line that satisfies these two conditions. So we use a similar method to before. We just uh, write down what we want, really. We write x is equal to, now the desired gradient for it to be perpendicular is just to take the negative reciprocal. So we take minus one and we divide it by the original gradient. And then we write an x here. So this is already halfway there. And then we're also gonna have a plus C, a constant. This is what we don't know. Um, so essentially what we've written down is a set of perpendicular lines like this, and the plus C is gonna uh, affect how high up the y-axis this line is. And by controlling what C is, we can make it pass through this point. So just like before, we're just gonna substitute this point in. So X is equal to three and Y is equal to minus one. So if we do this, we get y uh, minus 1 is equal to minus 1 half times 3 plus c. So then we just need to rearrange to solve this uh, equation. 
and we have minus one, move this over, plus three over two, and then this is just a half. So now subbing back in, we have y is equal to minus a half x plus a half. And this is our answer. This is the only line that is perpendicular to the original one and it passes through this point. So hopefully now you've got a bit more intuition about what parallel and perpendicular lines are and how to find them algebraically.